Hello everybody, it's SSD Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the mouse, one of the most requested vehicles to have put up. So, here we are. This thing is a meme by itself. So, over the course of, well, the years this tank has been out, we haven't really seen much of uh, buffs on this tank for Tier 10. You, you've seen a couple, but not, not as many as like the OE5 or the Conqueror or any of the others that are out there right now but it still holds up extremely well in the matchmaking for tier 10 the mouse is a low dpm tank but the armor is just ridiculous you have so much fun inside this thing as long as you know your angles which speaking of which the angle that we are holding right now is a really good angle to hold I mean, honestly, you're going to want to come about right here and then angle your turret just a tad bit more to the left and then don't want to give them many of flat spots. But if you look at the gun mount right in the front, you'll see where it flattens out on that gun mount at this angle. That is pinnable, but hitting it from long range, extremely difficult. Now, jumping into it, let's go ahead and take a look at the engine. <laughs> <laughs> Should I even mention it? <laughs> but here we go. 1750 overall horsepower. Your power to weight. Oh, yeah, this thing weighs a lot, man. It is a it is a beast. 9.26 horsepower to ton. Thing is 20 top speed, 15 reverse, 12% fire chance. That 12% fire chance is going to really help you out. Uh looking at the camouflage rating. Yeah, we're just going to go back to the engine. 20 top speed. You're not going to be the first one in the fight, but you are going to be extremely armored you know you're you're gonna get in there and you're gonna be the guy that everyone is either gonna shoot you or no one's gonna even try to shoot you depending on the angle that you are holding jumping over to the gun 0.38 gun dispersion values they're not the greatest a 15.4 second reload using a gun rammer improved ventilation a top-notch crew with brothers in arms and a premium consumable you can get your reload down to 12.18 Aiming time at 2.3 is actually really freaking quick. You also have a 12.8 centimeter. This gun is fantastic. It is the same 12.8 centimeter that comes off the E75. Except for statistics are different on the mouse because it's a different turret. Elevation at 24 degrees. Maximum gun depression at 8 degrees. The maximum gun depression actually surprised me to be honest. It's been a minute since I played the mouse. I didn't realize it had 8 degrees and well there was just a couple of moments where I'm slowly driving over a hill and I'm like wait a minute. I can shoot this guy. Alright, we're going to shoot him. Now, the tracks in this, you know, you are in a mouse. 15 degrees, not the fastest. But the second you hit that angle, you're not trying to move around. You're either going to be going forward or you're going to be going backwards. 15 reverse speed is going to really help you out, especially with the top speed at 20. You're not going to feel much of a difference going forward or backwards. So learning to play this tank and getting comfortable in it is your best bet. Accepting the fact that you are slow and last one in the fight. Thing is, if you get into the fight, help your team. You know, you are heavily armored. You are hard to take down. You have 400 view range. And if you're running coded optics or binoculars, just whatever, you know, you're on proper off guy, your light tank just got taken out. Go have a blast, drive up the left side, drive up the right side, get into a nice angle and just go nuts. You know, enjoy that 10,000 ricochet match and go get that still wall medal. This, this thing is just awesome. 16 degrees of turret rotation, so overall whenever you're on hard land with the 1.1, 1.3, and 2.1 for hard, medium, soft, you know, you can get your turret rotation up to 31 degrees while rotating the tank itself. So, sometimes you can get that light tank just trying to get on your side, but most of the time you get to rely on the teammates for that. That is a downfall to this tank. You are extremely tall, even with 8 degrees of gun depression. The light tank gets on your side. He is going to punish you. Um, best thing is, it's almost like trying to wipe off a shoe after you stepped in some poo. You know, just grind a wall and get him out in front of you. <laughs> Signal range is 720, helps out with spot assist and uh, track assist, assist damage in general, communication with the team. You spot somebody, as long as they're within your signal range, it will pop up for them. If they are not within your signal range, they will not pop up. Most of the time, though, 
they always pop up, so don't even worry about it. You know, your signal bounces off the of tanks. Ammunition inside this tank. Your standard rounds have got 246 armor pin. For a tier 10, 246 is not the highest, but they are P AP rounds, which means they don't lose a lot of penetration over distance. Your premium rounds are APCR, and they travel at 1150. Those APCRs, I like to shoot a lot of them. So yeah, we, we go a little bit nuts with APCR. Your high explosives at 920 meters a second, they're not too bad. We're going to be taking a look at the premium pin and high explosive pin here in a second. But first things first, take a look at this armor. 260 on the turret. So if you are flat on, let's say your turret is facing the enemy head on. Um, there's a lot of mediums and heavies that have a standard penetration of 270 to 268 all the way up to 272. Your best bet is always holding an angle. You always want to hold an angle inside this tank. Your lower armor on the very bottom is 250. Near the front, it does get lower, so high explosives that splash in front of you are going to do more damage. The side of your turret at 210 is what makes it to where you can hold that angle, especially since it's slanted armor. You can overangle this quite a bit. I believe right here it can still bounce a shell with very little effort. Your top plate and lower plate are both 200 millimeters, which means angle, 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 angle. That is the mouse. Find the angle, hold it. 185 on your tops on the sides. Just phenomenal armor all over the place. 140 on the inside low. Um, if you do get shot in the lower plate from the side while angling, uh, there is a chance that they will go through your tracks and hit the side and penetrate entirely, but that's like if they're lucky enough to get a standard shell to go through it in the first place. Um, you have additional spaced armor on the outside of 105, which, well, yeah, that, that's a lot of spaced armor. Not including, you have another 100 millimeters of spaced armor in the front as well, and there it is, the lower plate in the front is at 100. So splashing in the front of this, it'll do more damage, but not as much. 100 still can't be penetrated by most high explosives, even in tier 10. And then again, that is on the very bottom of the tank. It's just primarily, if you know you can't you can't hit them and you don't want to hit the lower plate that's 200 and you got a high explosive loader loaded, you're better off just shooting right underneath them, right in between the two tracks. Now, 90 millimeters on the under part of the turret cannot be overmatched. 60 millimeters in the front of additional space armor, including your gun at 60 millimeters, which in a head-to-head -head fight, if you put your gun inside somebody else's gun, 60 millimeters is enough to absorb 155, 170. So you can block a Jagaru shell, Jagpanzer E100, with your turret. Like, not, not the actual armor of the turret. Just your gun is going to take all that brute force and punishment, and you might break it. Jumping down, you got 55 millimeters, and that is your right underneath the track. So if you are coming over a hill and they shoot your tracks, they can go through that 55 millimeters. So keep that in mind whenever you're trying to be aggressive. But at the same time, you still had the 100 millimeters of space armor in the front. Honestly, that's not going to happen a whole lot. And then 50 millimeters on top. I actually need to double check and see if that is 50.2 or if it's just 50. Um, your tracks are 50 millimeters. So... Overall, this tank, <laughs> I mean, look, there, there's nothing else to go over right here. It stops at 50. That is your lowest armor. Now, we have a first-class mastery replay. I, I had a lot of replays to go over. A lot of them were derpy. A lot of them were just really fun matches. I did a live stream yesterday inside this tank, and Mouse for the win, <laughs> you believe it. This, this tank is just so fun. And it, it, it's just something that it, it takes the steam off, you know, you're having a bad day and it's like, you know what, let's pull out the mouse. You know, I'm not expecting to, you know, do 10,000 damage in a mouse. I'm expecting the ricochet 10,000 damage in a mouse, but not a deal. So today we're playing with Brute, Bark, and Blade. And uh, we like to call this map Nominominom. For whatever reason, it, it happened a long time ago. Uh, I was vaping at the time, and I had this juice called Nominominom, and this map, we just nicknamed it that, and honestly, it... 
<laughs> it, <laughs> no comment. It just popped up and it stuck. So, you know, yeah. Don't smoke, kids. It's bad for your health. I, uh, I probably quit about two years ago, but recently started back up because, well, you know, addictions are addictions, and uh, you need to try and quit one day and hope you can. Honestly, it takes a lot of discipline. I did quit for about a year, but then, you know, started back up. Just didn't care. But, started running again and everything else, and slowly slowing down, so hopefully I dropped it completely. And I believe we're loading the high explosives because of the, uh, there was two 2790s on the enemy team, and I'm just like, you know what, Let, let's just go lob high explosives everywhere. Let's, let's make these guys hate us. And Bark says my uh, tank was too clean, so he decided to scratch it a little bit. <laughs> the mouse. <laughs> this tank is just... It's fun. It, it is a competitive tank. You have one gun. You know, there, there's not multiple packages. And depending on if they buff the E100, I might use it, I might not. That just really depends on what's coming up in the future for the game. I, I'm really hoping that they do provide that turret buff from the 250 that it has up to the 270 that they have on PC. That would be extremely nice. And uh, we're, we're just going to throw this out there. If you are looking to be the first in combat in the mouse, we are almost two minutes into the match and barely reaching the halfway point of the map. <laughs> like, down the two line. So, <laughs> ten kilometers uphill. You know, you're going to be expecting a lot of that. And loading APCR, letting me in the crew go all the way in. Damn. Yeah. You know, E100, fantastic tank. <laughs> um, I, I've had a couple of matches that, while streaming yesterday, we uh, pulled out like a 3v6, a 2v5, there there was just a couple that just drove me up the wall because they were just so good. So the premium shells inside this tank, I forgot to mention, have 311 base penetration and your high explosives have 65 base penetration. So 1150 meters of travel speed for your APCR premium rounds with 311 base pin. Even <laughs> even the premium have less pin than most of the other tanks in the game. But it is above 300. They are going to go through a lot of targets. Just don't expect to pin another mouse unless he's looking at you straight on. And artillery is just lobbing shells at us. It's a tier 8 bird. So. Yeah, those, those are... <laughs> just look at it. <laughs> it won't stop. And that E75 wasn't upgraded, so 320 ricocheted. I feel a little bit bad for him. He just ended up in a bad match, and here we are just trying to be as aggressive as we can in a mouse, which is, you can only be so aggressive in a mouse. Like, don't get me wrong, you can be aggressive, but only so aggressive. So, starting off, we are running a gun rammer, improved ventilation, and binoculars. Primarily, uh, there is a build setup that I want to try out on this tank, which is going to be a spa liner, a re repairs, so the toolbox, and then remove coated optics, and remove the gun rammer, run with the toolbox repair, Ver no, not vertical, we're not going to run vertical, we're going to run a super heavy spa liner for the additional 50% crew protection, and then we're going to remove the large med kit and throw on another large repair kit for that 45% increased repair time and I just want to see how fast we can get those tracks back on see if we can just be super aggressive one match you know fingers crossed that we don't lose a crewmate and the 53-55 hit us just right and took out that ammo rack your ammo rack it is located right underneath the turret and right in the back of the turret. So do keep that in mind when you are angling. Thing is though is that you know if they hit your ammo rack that, that's your fault for 
know, not having situational awareness. Because of the way that this tank is set up, it's extremely difficult to hit that ammo rack. And look at that! The first five minutes of the match. The first five minutes and ten seconds of the match, we are barely breaking 950 damage. <laughs> Come on, mouse. We are right now in the middle of the fight. It's time to start racking up the damage. And with the armor that we have, not even the high explosives from that little Burt can hurt us. I mean, don't get me wrong, he can hurt us if he hits us just right, but just the second he hits that thick armor, it just does, doesn't do anything. Is that the second ammo rack we've hit? That is the second ammo rack we've hit. We've taken out the ammo rack and the Conqueror. One of his repair kits are gone, or maybe even both of his repair kits are gone. Hitting the tracks, tracking them down, getting a little bit of a track assist. Uh, lost our driver. And aiming further up. Look, another T95E6. They are all over the place. <laughs> tracks and 477. So, you reload, you're not going to be the fastest damage dealer, but with the armor, you're going to be able to consistently take those shots. After you fire, you always want to look away from your target. Just because you don't want to consistently look at the people you're trying to shoot you don't want to give them you, you, you don't want to expose yourself you only have 260 armor in the front against tier eights yeah you can aim at them the entire time you know it, they will be lucky to go through your turret and if you know your tier eight category you know what tanks to watch out for so for instance the t-34 the low the roger dodger there's a couple of them up there but then a lot of them only have like 250 to 260 armor pin and they're just going to bounce right off this turret. Honestly, a lot of those tier 8s aren't even going to stand a chance against you. And against like tier 9s and tier 10s, yeah. It, you you got to watch out for those premium rounds coming flying. Unless you know the tier 9 universe and you know that they're not upgraded. Then, then yeah, you know, screw it, face them head on. That's your choice. Thing is though, the mouse, honestly, this tank... <laughs> I, I've played it now for two days. I wanted to get this uh, mouse replay out yesterday, but you know, I've been slacking off a little bit. Honestly, I, I haven't uploaded for like two days, but th that's just because taking a little bit of a break, you know, there wasn't a lot of matches to go over because, you know, buying one tank and trying to get a good match in it. And for how slow it is, you're, you're not going to be seeing top of the board a whole lot. You know, like, it, it, if you do, congrats. You know how to play the mouse. You know your positioning. You know where to go, but me, I've, I've left the, the meta areas a long time ago. As you've probably noticed with my live streams and some of my gameplay in the videos, I, I don't follow the meta areas anymore. I go after more of the uh, just separate routes because it's always nice to change up your style of gameplay, try out different things and see if it works. You know, if you're looking to get your win rate up, try new things you know if it works two out of three times that's that, that's still above 50 percent that's like what 60 to 70 percent win rate if it works two out of three if, if it only works like two out of five try something else you know go, go a little bit nuts try something different every single match and sometimes you know you're gonna see somebody going out and doing something it's like just tack along with them you know we're, we're not here to you know be super competitive it's not ranked gameplay that we're getting into and look at that 4755 damage dealt with 1748 assisted so i'm going to continue playing the mouse and i'm going to try and get my hands on a a, <laughs> a scouting mouse replay that that is my goal the scout mouse so so far my opinions on the mouse the line leading up to it, I remember grinding out the line. So the tier 8 at the VK100, and then, then you got the Mausen. Honestly, they're all good tanks. You know, you're, you're heavily armored, and as long as you play correctly, you can be a very, very defining factor in whether you win or you lose inside those tanks. Well, you know what? This tank is totally worth the grind. If you don't got one, I don't recommend to get it as a competitive tank, but I, I just recommend to get one just to have one. 
this is a beast of a tank. You know, it teaches you how to handle your armor and angle. Or if you already know how to do it, experienced players are going to have a blast inside their mouths. So, this is Mad Haven. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, and comment. Tomorrow, on Saturday the 24th, I will more than likely be streaming on probably YouTube. I've been trying to set up my Twitch a little bit, but catch me then. You guys have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow.